going on everybody? Welcome to part 11 of my playthrough for Fear Files Extraction Point. In the last episode, we left off right in the middle of a firefight, and in this episode, I don't know how we're going to make it out, but I somehow, I think, with this, we'll be okay. Yeah! Ah, uh, like I said, nothing nothing better than just being able to hold down the trigger in a shooter and just blow through all the enemies. I, I don't have to look at this trigger. Sure, I could conserve ammo, but you know what? I have full health packs, I have no armor, and a gigantic gun. It's, it's just too much fun, you know what I mean? Now, I was actually thinking, I, I should probably just know, not that it makes a real difference or anything, but I'm not. Uh, for the last couple parts, I've been playing with my wireless controller, which is the controller I've been using since I got my new Xbox. Because my old controller, I should, uh, I'll never, I would never sell it. And uh, actually, I don't think anyone, no official places like GameStop would buy it because I've actually opened it up and uh, done a custom paint job on it. And it's not like, it's not like a beautiful job, I did it all on my own. Oh, nice, a reflex boother and a health bo boother? Boother, yeah. Nice, but that's, uh, that was nice of them right there. S considering, this, this game, you know, I think this game has, uh, spikes in difficulty is the thing about it. I don't think it's, I don't think it's, well, obviously if you put it on hard, it's gonna be difficult. But I don't think it's a particularly difficult game all the time. Like, sometimes it's like you get you get into a firefight and it's okay. But other times you get into a firefight like this where it's kind of going around. Like, you can lose your health really quick. But as long as you use a decent amount of slow-mo and keep your finger over the Y button, which is the health back button, I think, unless you, uh... Oh, he didn't even put up a fight. Unless you, uh, go around changing stuff. Then you're, you're really gonna be okay. For the most part. As long as you're not an idiot. Yeah, unless Alma shows up. Then you're it's all done. But uh, I'm using an Afterglow controller now, which I actually did a review on one time. It's on my channel somewhere in my reviews, and it's it's a good controller. It is. I don't like to use it for intense shooters like maybe Call of Duty or Gears of War Online because the right joystick doesn't feel. Even when I adjust my sensitivity accordingly, lower, higher, whatever I need, it seems to be. In this game, it seems to be fine. I've been playing with it for a little bit, but uh, I, I don't know. It seemed to be uh, not responsive enough. I suppose is the term. <gasps> oh my God! Light! Wait. Wait. No, 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 I'm so close! No! No, run, Point Man! Point Man, run! Point Man! Oh my god, don't look back! Go, go, go! Yeah. <sighs> Man, my head. Ugh, interval four. Malice. Jesus. Man. And now, now we're on top of a roof in a city, you know what I mean? Wait. Is that our helicopter? Oh god, it's shooting at us. Can't be our helicopter. What am I thinking about? We don't have backup. Ooh, rocket launchers. Could use those, though. Uh, I want the three burst ones. Is this the three burst one? Yeah, it is. This is, this is way better. What's up, helicopter? Oh man, I missed it. Jerk. Uh, so like I was saying before, oh no, robot thing. Uh, like I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted by explosions. Um, yeah, the controller is kind of a little bit not as sensitive or responsive in the joysticks as I'd like it to be. But for this game, it's been pretty good. And honestly, other than that, it's a really good controller. It was, like, you can use it not as an afterglow controller. Like right now, I'm not using it as an afterglow controller, so it's just a regular controller. But uh, you can turn it on so it glows green. At least I got the green color. I think the only other cool colors would have been like purple or red. But, um, probably purple would have been nice if I get that, but I think, like, the purple costed more, which is just ridiculous. Like, no one color should cost more. I get, like, popularity and stuff, but, eh. Nice. And, uh, you can also turn it on so it, like, when it vibrates, when the controller rumbles, it flashes, which I think is a really cool addition. And I love it, especially for a game like this or if you're at a party at night. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's fun to do. And there's that tire po poster. Ah, that thing freaks me out. It was, like, in the very beginning of the game, too. So we're on Interval 4 now, which is just about, like, I'd say halfway through the game, and I forgot, there are actually technically six intervals in this campaign, and it's it's awesome because we're, we're halfway through this campaign, it's been a pretty long campaign, longer than I remember it being, and we still have a whole nother campaign to play after this. That one's not quite as long if I remember correctly, but, you know. And isn't it convenient that we got blown on top of the hospital, which is where I'm 90% sure we are, like, we got, we got blown on top of the hospital that we were trying to get to. What are the odds, man? Point man, luckiest man alive. Uh, so did, whoa, oh, those are civilians, I'm sorry! Wait, no, they're not. Okay, well, there are some civilians, I think. Okay. What the hell is this thing? Like a radio, makeshift radio thing? That's that's pretty neat. Oh, that sucks to be that guy. What What is he doing? 
Just, just chill. He, what, am I, like, I killed his buddy, and he's just chilling here. All right, cool. We get to jack a car. No, no jacking cars. Man, they should totally do that. Oh, that didn't sound entirely good. Nice. I love how you can break those open and actually get grenades out of them. That's pretty cool. I think you can do this. No. Sometimes it's hard to tell what boxes you can break open. And I didn't actually know about that until this playthrough. Locked door. Speed limit 5? Yeah, right. This is actually kind of reminiscent, though, of the uh, when you're trying to get out of the parking garage in Fear 1. So, I, I know I said they didn't really copy and paste too much from Fear 1 into this game, but, uh, you know, a little bit. It's not too bad, because it's a pretty long add-on for a campaign. I mean, it's not a campaign, it's a standalone extraction. No, stand. Oh my god, chicken robot. Crap, 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 crap. Should have taken the rocket launcher. Do I still have it with me? No, I got rid of it. What was I thinking? Why didn't somebody stop me? God, it's just destroying everything. If you take out those pillars, technically we'd all fall. Like, the, the garage top would fall on us. God, die! Die, chicken thing! Ugh! Throwing grenades at it. Ugh! Jesus Christ! I don't know, but this, this is... Like, these... This part in particular, I guess, is the only part you could really compare to Fear 1, and that's not such a bad thing, like I said, because it's, it's, uh, I'm going to say it one more time, just in case you didn't hear me the first time. Standalone expansion pack. So it's, it's not really, it's, it's cool, I like it. It is, it is cool. And I wish they had done more stuff, like DLC for Fear 3, or added on more DLC. I think, actually, sad story is, at this point in time, I'm pretty sure Monolith, uh, the company that makes this, like, they don't exist. Whichever company it was, whether it's Monolith or uh, Day One Studios, I can't remember which one, but they laid off like 90% of their staff, and they're just making like little games now, I think, which is just sad. So fear, un, uh, really unlikely we will ever see any more. Whoa, let's not walk into those. Let's use common sense. More than unlikely we will not see any more fear DLC, fear games. I think a little while ago they did announce like a fear online thing, but I'm pretty sure it's for like I think it was a trailer for like. China, I think, or something that didn't allow online games now they're not like approved by them, so now they have like an approved version for just them online, from, like Fear 2. Something like that. I uh, It's a little bit of trivia for you into the Fear universe. And I think I always thought Fear was a pretty decent multiplayer game. Fear 1's multiplayer, uh, not the best. Uh, I think it's pretty much a dead multiplayer at this point. No one plays it, especially this game online. If anyone has Fear files, nobody plays it I've ever met. Fear 1, I think occasionally you can find someone online, very rarely in like, you know, midnight, something like that. But Fear 2 had a good multiplayer, last time I checked people still played it. Um, shoot grenades here. And it, it was a really good game online, I think it was a lot of fun. It got shadowed obviously by games, bigger online games like Call of Duty and Halo and Battlefield and stuff like that, but it was a good game and I, uh, I wish people still played it. Maybe, maybe someday it'll make like an epic comeback, you know what I mean? Like people get sick of Call of Duty finally and Call of Duty and Battlefield stuff just falls off the map. And people come back and play Halo. Or, uh, Halo. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, I. No, I'm not out of guns, am I? Oh, no. No. Oh, okay. So when you're completely out of ammo, you actually switch to melee mode. That's not good. I'm, I'm all out of ammo. Bad. Bad, bad, bad. Uh. Oh, thank God. What's up, robot chicken? Ooh, direct hit. I'll, I'll, I'll trade your hit for hit. Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, thank God. Ooh. Yeah, so I was like, I was wondering there for a second, I was like, why am I in melee mode? Oh, I have no ammo to fight the giant robot chicken. And I'm sure they aren't actually called giant robot chickens, but if they were, that would be pretty sweet. Ah, uh, I don't want to waste my ammo on you. Come here, buddy. Come here. Oh, he's got a shotgun. I'll take that. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Kidney punch. Kidney punch. Poor guy. Had no idea what happened to him. Take that. Nothing else. SUV. Who drives an SUV? I don't know. I shouldn't taunt people who drive different cars. It's not nice or something. Man, they're really laying down some uh, some obvious traps, guys. My other gun? Oh, we're all out of ammo for my giant gun. That's sad. I'm sure we'll find at least one more for the campaign's over. And, like, if these weren't glowing red, we might actually, you know, not see them and fall onto them, but... Could I not hit that? Is my aim really that bad? By a show of hands, is my aim that bad? It probably is. Ooh, I like the creaky noises. It, I like creaky noises in places like... It's not a soundtrack, 
like this, it, it kind of is a soundtrack, you know what I mean? It's not like spooky music, like, no, 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 something like that. I don't know, I'm just making it up. But like the creaky noises is like the soundtrack and it sounds spooky. Hmm. Hallways. Always gotta be hallways. Ah. This actually is an area that's kind of uh, reminiscent of Fear 2. Do you guys ever feel like you're not alone? You still don't know, do you? What you are. Why you're here. You will be a god among men. I was sure it was here because I was a badass. And I am a god among men. Come on, I'm Point Man. Sort of alludes to more of the story, but at this point, I mean, you can honestly deduce if you haven't figured it out, but you can honestly... That's, that's, that's half the problem, because people find fear to be such a confused story. They're like, ah, oh, it's such a weird, stupid, confusing story. I don't get it. Rabble. But, but uh, no, it's... It, you At this point, you can deduce, and I've already said it, so I don't feel bad about bringing it up, but you can deduce that... Well, you already know after playing Fear 1, which I don't care about giving spoilers if you haven't played Fear 1. You're like, no, don't spoil Fear 1. And it's, it's always funny when you see people do that. Like, oh, don't spoil the first game. I didn't play it, but I'm watching the second game. You know what I mean? Like, that doesn't make any sense. So, no, that, that Alma is your mother. You, you could figure that out with the first one. And Alma is also Fettel's mother. So you could probably deduce that your brothers and or stepbrothers sharing the same mother and whatnot. So it's, it's a good family tree. And they, they go in more... The, the story is still as confusing in Fear 3, but it makes the most amount of sense in Fear 3. And Fear 2 is kind of off the beaten path to the main story of fear, but, you know. What's not off the beaten path is, or is off the beaten path, is where I'm supposed to go. And obviously, you know, I'm such a master of direction, and... God, why do they do this to me when I'm playing games? Okay, um, let's think like a logical person, right? We probably gotta get down here. Uh, we don't wanna go through that. Uh... Doing a switch would be too easy. That wasn't there before. Huh. Let me go through this door. Ah, of course. Why run? You cannot escape something you have been part of since before you were born. I'm not running. I'm shooting. That's what I do. Haven't you noticed? You eat, you eat people, Vettel, and I shoot people. It's just kind of the way things work. There it is, the, the creaking. I just dig it. You're not coming, are you? I'm going to die here alone. I don't want to die with them. You know, I'd reassure her that I'm on my way, but I'm a mute, so <laughs> I won't be doing that. Okay, so now that we actually made it to the hospital we've been trying to get to all game, we're going to end things off right here. In the next episode, we'll pick it off and keep going in and try to save Jin. So until then, I thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you later.